Today might just be the biggest day of Parc de Prem so far. Champions League final, Hertha Berlin. I hear you ask, Jack, what about the FA Cup? And to that I say, I don't want to talk about it. We lost in the semi-final to Wolves. They scored a penalty. No one showed up. I can't even use the excuse that I rotated the team. It was a full strength 11. After all the talk about doing the treble, winning the Premier League, winning the Champions League, winning the FA Cup, it could be Wolverhampton Wanderers that ruined my dreams and Newport County. I mean, we've beaten many teams this year, not Newport County. They're still bloody massive. I mean, look, to be fair, they did win League 2. Suppose we should also acknowledge we did end up winning the Premier League. We actually kind of stumbled across the line. Our form lately has not been very good. We won the league by four points, but having lost to Wolves in the FA Cup semi-final, we drew against them, we lost to Norwich, then we drew against Newcastle. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not exactly the best prep going into the biggest game in the club's history. I'm not sure many bookmakers would have had this as the possible final for the Champions League of the year 2038. Guernsey appearing in their first Champions League final in 27 years since the club was founded. Hertha Berlin appearing in their first in 146 years. Someone is going to be a new champion of Europe. Is it going to be us? Let's find out today, shall we? Today, by the way, is episode number 125 of Park to Prem. I did check the number. Biggest episode in the club's history. If you're excited for it, if you're hyped for it, if you want to help me get this video into recommended, leave a like, leave a comment. What's been your favourite moment of the Guernsey adventure so far or favourite player? Let me know. Who are you going to remember this save game for? This is absolutely massive, but given the fact that so much has been wrapped up, really today, full focus on the final and then all the end of season wrap up shebang. This might seem a little bit premature, but we've got £60 million in the bank. I'm trying to spend £55 million uh, on a new 18 year old. Uh, some things never change. But if you're looking for something to get excited about going into the next season, regardless of if we win or lose today, I think De Hart here could be the man. 18 years old, French international with two caps, can play left back, centre defensive mid, right back, left wing back. He's absolutely blooming amazing and he's the ultimate versatile squad player and he's actually a capable wing back. These do not exist. This is amazing. Now, whether or not he's worth the £55 million remains to be seen. But when you look at the list of teams interested, we're in good company. Brentford, not sure why they're there. But everyone else, we're in good company. Uh... Yeah, I'm hoping he's going to join us because I'm trying to get this deal done nice and early to stop anyone else coming in for him. Now, like I already mentioned, this isn't exactly the Champions League final many people would have predicted. Liverpool, the previous champions, were knocked out by Bayern, who we eventually beat. Elsewhere, Tottenham knocked out Real Madrid. Barcelona were knocked out by Dortmund. Arsenal were knocked out by Hertha Berlin. Man City knocked out by Milan. And truth be told, we now have just this weird look final of Guernsey v Hertha Berlin... Which, as I mentioned last episode, and I will mention again, this was the Conference League final last year. And to make things even more weird, Michael Carrick is still manager of Hertha Berlin. Is he a good manager? Uh, he, he's not as good as Kieran Tierney, but he's not too bad. That said, if we look at the Bundesliga, Hertha Berlin have finished fifth. They are fifth in the league in the Bundesliga. I don't think they've won the Bundesliga in this save game. In fact, you can see here, they finished fourth in 2029. That's their best finish in a long, long time. And since then... Uh, They've done, I don't know how they're here. Their key player is Diallo. This guy does have 10 goals in 14 Champions League games. He was with them last year when we took them on in the Conference League. I remember him. He's a bit scary. And another man we are going to need to be wary of is Uras Kristic. I hope I've said that correct. I've, tr I've tried. Um, this guy, not a bad striker either. I feel like they've got bags of pace. But ultimately, when you look at the squad and their team and the scout report on them... The star ratings aren't very intimidating. Their key man is Dmitry Lapshov, at least their highest earner. He's very good at free kicks. There is an air of deja vu today. Maybe it's just me. Her to Berlin, another final. Before we get into it, though, we do need to do an away day. And today's away day is at the Estadio Metropolitano, which is Atletico Madrid Stadium. I'm kind of glad that Hertha Berlin beat Atleti in the semi-final, because otherwise it would have felt like a bit of an unfair final playing Atleti at home. But yeah, we're heading to Madrid. 
I'm excited. Let's go see what it's all about. So we are heading away from Guernsey and we are heading to sunny Spain. Not for the first time. Of course, we took on Bilbao, I think, last year. But today, we're heading to the capital. And we are heading to the east of the city. We're heading to the Estadio Civitas Metropolitano. Uh, here it is. It's on the edge of town. It kind of reminds me of Bayern Stadium being on a junction. Okay, first things first. Not very green. Uh... Have there been fires here, or is this... This can't be what it looks like, can it? I guess maybe it's just the summer and everything's died. Uh, yeah, it looks like a wasteland. Okay, look, the, the grass might be dead, but there are some trees, and first and foremost, car park, and I'm gonna say it, we're all thinking it, it's a rather beautiful car park, isn't it? And I did spot here, there is a skate park. Looks like it's two quarter pipes with a fun box in the middle. Does that count as a skate park? I'll allow it. There's a Sector B to the parking. I mean, is, where's Sector C is now what I'm wondering. Here's Sector... Where's Sector C? There must be a Sector C. If there is a Sector C, uh, I can't find it labelled. I'm sorry. Is the whole stadium on like a raised platform or something? You've got like this weird area like around the edge. Of it. it looks like the stadium sat on. I guess the way to answer that question is to head to Street View. What have we got? Let, let's go to the roundabout first. This Street View footage is from February 2023. This might be the most recent Street View footage we've ever had. And here is the stadium. So turns out it's not... Uh, maybe it is on a raised thing. Or maybe the whole stadium was built on a hill. At one point. Either way, here is the stadium. Is it just me or has it got a fancy roof? It kind of reminds me of like a pie tin. Now I want apple pie. I will never criticise Google for not going into enough depth with their street view. They've gone down every single lane of the car park to make sure the entire thing is covered by street view. Does this... I can go to every lane. I mean, this feels completely unnecessary and yet I respect it immediately. I hope they abide by the one-way system. I can't see it, sadly, but apparently there's a Taco Bell here. That might be a first for an away day, or at least a first since MK Don's. Did MK Don... Did Milton Keynes have a Taco Bell? I can't remember. I absolutely love the fact they've got a bear at a tree, like they do on their badge. Can someone explain to me why there's a bear at a tree on Atleti's badge? I'm sure there's a story for it. I mean, they've got a statue. There must be some significance. Right, not a load of facilities on the outside, but a couple of little things to look at. There's loads of dots here. I want to see what's going on behind the scenes. I'll tell you what, I bet you can't guess who this box belongs to at Atleti's ground. Any, any guesses for who might own this box? I, I, I think it's Apple. I think Apple owned this one. I'm not sure if this is the best or worst photosphere ever. He's loving it. Shout out to Javier. Here is the Atleti dressing room. I assume we get the home dressing room because we're cooler than her to Berlin. Uh, I'm a big fan. Do those seats look really comfy or is it just me? As for the inside of the stadium, I feel like this is a very good venue for the Champions League final. There, I've said it. It's a pretty stadium. I love the roof. There's something about just oddly satisfying unique roofs that makes me irrationally happy. Uh, I, I like this ground. I like it. Big fan. Seatart, not the most extravagant, but it will do. I don't know what it is, but I love stadiums with circular roofs that don't have a running track. It just feels a bit like a coliseum. Do you know what I mean? It feels a bit gl gladiatorial. Like I'm going into battle or something, which I feel like we do need to do sooner rather than later. I'm conflicted because on the one hand, I absolutely love the inside of this stadium. It just looks really cool. It's pretty unique. The roof looks wicked from the inside and outside. Has a nice car park, but, and it's a rather big but, it's, it's not got a load going on on the outside and I am distracted by the death and destruction to the side. The Estadio Metropolitano, I'm going to give you a firm, fair... 6 out of 10. I think, I think that's fair. If you'd invested more money in your skate park, Madrid, would have given you a 6.25. I was about to talk team news and team selection for getting something very important. I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay, okay. Look, look. It's a, it's a Champions League final, folks. I'm not going for the full suit. I'm not that guy. Plus, when I did it a few years ago, Gibraltar Apex didn't go very well when I wore suits. So since then, I've decided it's a curse. Now, unfortunately for us, Craig Sweeney, after getting sent off in the semi-final, which was already won at the time, he's not available for today's game. Worth noting, he does now know how to play centre defensive mid. He learned that position very, very quickly this season. Here is the team we're going with. There's a big call that I've made, and with the absence of Sweeney, I'm going with the 4-2-3-1. It worked against Hertha Berlin in the last final we played against them, and... 
with a slight on centre-backs and with Chapman in some pretty good form in the Champions League. I feel like today's a day to bring him back for he missed the tail end of the season through injury, but he is fit enough today. Of course, between the sticks, we are going with Manny Wilford. I'm going to hope he doesn't do a carrius for us because he doesn't like important matches. Let's hope he doesn't get concussed. That would be good, wouldn't it? But the England international has been our main goalkeeper. When you look at his form in the last 20 matches, there's lots of green there. He's done a good job for us. At right back, of course, we are going with Archer. was a big, big pickup this year. Did have his issues with injury, but when he was fit... He's played really, really well for us. 11 assists in 26 in the league. In the Champions League, two goals to his name as well. At centre-back, we are going with the dynamic duo of Rios and Coppo. Of course, the Argentine international alongside the Italian international. Two very, very young players. Um, both these players like big matches. Or at least, well, actually, no. Coppo, we don't know if he likes them or not yet. But Rios, he loves them. He loves the big match. He lives for the occasion. And across this season, they have been ever-reliable they have been very good, so they start. I feel like this is the one area of the pitch where I didn't really have a dilemma. At left back, we are going with Adi Gianfi. Four assists in the Champions League campaign for the 22-year-old. Someone who feels like he's been around at the club forever. This is his fourth season at the side. Not necessarily his best, not necessarily his worst. Didn't hit the 12 assists he did last year in the league. But turning up in the final would make me forget all that. At centre defensive mid, we are going with the Portuguese dynamic duo, Grassa, who just continues to improve. Every time I look at him, I notice a new attribute's gone up. He's been absolutely mad at the back for us. And of course, alongside him, one of the big signings we made this summer, Monteiro, brought him in for this kind of game. The Regista... I'm going to hope he's going to run the show from deep in midfield. And into the final third we go, where of course we have Gustavo Lemos. Last time we were in a European Cup final in that Conference League final, he came on at half-time, got two goals and an assist. Today, he gets the nod starting. To his left, of course, we go with Cadman, who is the top goal scorer currently in the Champions League. He has 11 goals to his name, and up top we are going with Alanis. Worth remembering... This season, we've actually broken the record for most goals in a Champions League campaign. Any more goals we add today will add to the record. I'm going to hope that Alanis shows up when needed. He's been ever-reliable, continuing to improve, and... Yeah, I feel, I feel like I have to start him in this game. On the bench, of course, we get 12 sub-options. We are using almost each and every one of them, even Greg makes the bench which I mean if you've missed a few episodes lately you're sat thinking Greg's back yeah Greg's back but if we do find ourselves in a situation where we do need to bring on some big guns we do need to change the tide of the game I'm going to be looking at the likes of Tyrese Big Knot as a player who can do that has made cameos on off the bench this Champions League campaign and done well George not Jorge it'd be Jorge if he's Spanish he's Brazilian it's a Portuguese name he's just George Simvalidis one goal in the Champions League Come on off the bench a number of times during the knockout stages is, of course, only joined us in January, but has proven his worth. Another player who I feel like, as an impact sub, you could do a lot worse, couldn't you? As we head into this final, I know that we're favourites. I know that this season, the Champions League, I don't want to say it's been gifted to us, but we've had a very easy run where teams have been knocked out that perhaps I was a bit fearful of. And ultimately, we're taking on a known quantity in Hertha Berlin that I genuinely believe we can beat. We have the quality. We have the ability. I'm desperately hoping that this decision to play the 4-2-3-1 is the right one. And well, we are going to find out together. We are here in Madrid. It's a Champions League final. I'm there in my iconic green and red suit, which I really should get a replica of in real life. Maybe one day. But yeah, the players are lining up. The opening sequence is ready. I feel, I feel like I should have my hands behind my back or something. And there's a kickoff highlight. I'm not playing with extended highlights on. This could be real. Okay, buckle up, everyone. Let's put the nerves to the back of our mind if we can. Alanis, Chapman, he's through. He's tried to dink the keeper. The keeper's held on to it. But a shot inside the first minute feels good. I am actually really, really nervous for this. I know that with Champions League finals, you can spend years chasing them. And I feel like whenever you do a save game like this, if you don't win the Champions League at any point, you just end up regretting it forever. And this final, as far as finals go, is one that we are the favourites for. Usually when you get to your first Champions League final, you're a bit of an underdog. I'm looking at the stats so far in this game. We've had almost 70%, but we've had 69%. Someone's going to write a comment about it. We've got a free kick here. Monteiro, we've been on top. Can we find the breakthrough? 
Not with headers like that from Coppo. Free kick, Monteiro. I brought you in for moments like this, mate. He steps up, he hits it straight into the wall. The ball floats into the air, though. And Jao Gressa heads it in. Inside half an hour, we take the lead in the Champions League final. It's a bizarre goal. It's an odd goal. It's not exactly the way I imagined our two centimetres were going to link up in this game. The ball floats up in the air. There's five Hertha Berlin players around Grasser. Grasser doesn't care. He wins the header. Keeper's left on his arse. Ball's in the back of the net. It is 1-0 here. I love the fact, by the way, Monteiro was actually given an assist for that. I'm not sure how he can claim any kind of assists, but I'll allow it. There's five minutes left off. This first half has just flown by. We've had two shots on target. They've had none. It's not exactly been a classic so far. The YouTuber kind of part of me thinks, I want goals in the second half. I want drama. I want excitement. The, the rational, you know, try-hard football manager player in me sat there thinking, this is, this is fine. 2-0 would be a good result. You know, comfortable win. Get an early goal in the second half. Okay, there's still lots to be done here. 45 minutes left, but... Happy with what I've seen thus far. 10 minutes into this second half already. Not a great deal happening for either team, but so far in this game, I feel like the 4 2 3 1 has been the right decision. Of course, we've made the most of the set piece that we've had. We're now 20 minutes into this half as well. I hate the fact that Lemos and Chapman are both injured. I feel like I've got to take them both off here, and I'm going to bring in Big Knot, and I'm going to bring in Sula. I'm going to bring in some pacey players. Big Knot, 17 acceleration, 14 pace. Very well-rounded kind of attacking option. Sula, even quicker. So uh, if the, if the Athletic defence are looking tired, I'm hoping we're about to break their spirits here by bringing on pacey players. It's like we're playing FIFA. You know, you play Ultimate Team, you bring on your players with 99 pace at 60 minutes. I'm, ba I'm basically doing that. Can we make something happen here? Cadman, Jamfi the left back, dispossessed. The ball's cleared away. Rios, though, keeps it alive. And now with Archer at right back. Tackle comes crunching in from Ronaldo. But Archer does still have the ball here. He lays it to Grasser. Cadman, Grasser, Alanis. Cadman! Is that going to count? We're going to a VAR check. Not now, VAR. Now is not the time to use this. Is it off? So we're getting a review. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, and I'm, I don't need to hope that anymore. The goal is allowed. It is Cadman with another goal to add to his tally. He's the top goal scorer in this competition. Grasser, Alanis. I don't know if that was a pass or a shot by Alanis. Whatever it was, it was terrible. Tafani interfered with play, gave it to Cadman. We've doubled our lead here. We're 2-0 up. 17 minutes left. It's, it's time for game management, everyone. You know, you know what I'm about to do. I'm about to do... Uh, another another FIFA tactic. Tejera's coming on. And this might be a football manager romantic in me. I'm bringing in Aaron McKillop. We signed McKillop, just as a reminder, in the championship for £130,000. He is now about to play in a Champions League final. And as for Tejera, another player who joined us in the championship for less than £200,000. Look at the seasons Tejera's had. He's probably my signing of the series with his 20 jumping reach. He's going to come on here. We're going to go to the super defensive system and we're just going to try and see out what remains here. Bring on the legends, 2-0 up. Maybe a degree of complacency creeping in is, is going to be fine though, I'm sure. Six minutes plus any added time. I'm starting to relax. I'm starting to believe. He's done up. Let's just, let's just ease on the believing a little bit just for now. McKillop with the ball. Monteiro, big knot. Rios, options to his left and right, Archer to the right, plays it forward, what a ball that is to Big Knot, Cadman's in the middle here, can Big Knot pick him out, he goes to Cadman, who gets his third goal, or our third goal of the game, his second goal of the game, and it's 3-0, that is game over, Guernsey FC, it's taken 16 seasons, Champions League winners. And in terms of Park to Prem runs, from entering the Premier League to winning the Champions League, I think this might be our fastest ever. What a team we've put together. A young team. We would have been really nice, wouldn't it, if we had a FA Cup final to play as well today. But never mind. Three minutes of added time has just come and gone. We get the custom win animation. We beat her to Berlin last year in the Conference League final 4-2. On this occasion, we've beaten them 3-0. Was it a high drama? Not really. Was it a high stakes? Not exactly. But don't take anything away from us here at Guernsey FC. We've just won the Champions League. Let the confetti fall. Enjoy the custom podium that the Champions League has. And 
I know there's some people now sat thinking, well, what, what do you do from here? I want to cement a dynasty here at Guernsey. We've got a young squad. I want to prove that this season winning the Champions League wasn't a fluke. And bizarrely, I've, st I've still not won the FA Cup yet, which I do actually want to win. When you look at the XG story, um, it's not been a classic. I'll, I'll be like, it's, it's not. We had a load of shots early on, and then between the 25th minute and the end of the game, we had three shots and they all went in. But sometimes football's like that. And I suppose we should give some praise to Matty Cadman. Matty Cadman, two goals in a Champions League final. Three seasons ago, this man was playing for Reading in the Championship. Now he's playing in a Champions League final and tearing it up. And just a little reminder, he's 21 years old. I want to say, I can't believe it. And if you told me at the start of the season we were going to win the Champions League this year, I probably would have laughed at you. But given the teams we actually came up against, uh, I feel like there was never a game where I felt like we were massively backs against the wall. But like I said, I, I need to prove to myself as much as you guys, I think, that this wasn't just a fluke. We get £17 million to win in the Champions League. That's nice. And here are the players who get Champions League winner medals. Luis Tejera gets one. And Leon Pollard, look, he might not lo no longer be with us. We sold him for £28 million. He's been absolutely awful, just as a reminder. But he was born in Guernsey. He was raised in Guernsey. And he does get a Champions League winner medal for Guernsey. So that's nice. Apparently, I've staked my claim as one of the most successful managers in English history. Uh, yeah, definitely. And in fact, here is the Hall of Fame. We're right behind Don Revy. Uh, we've got a little while, little way to go if I want to beat Bob Paisley. He is miles ahead at the top. There is, by the way, just a nice little summary here of some of the stuff we've done at Guernsey. It, it, it's been a good time. Cadman, unsurprisingly, man of the match in that game. You were superb, my son. And perhaps unsurprisingly, we have been labelled as the biggest overachievers. Um, we're a good team. I don't know if we were a Champions League winning quality team. This wasn't meant to happen so soon. The players are looking a little bit tired across the board, but good news for them. Because we bottled the FA Cup final, the season's over. And thankfully for us, it's not a season where there's the Club World Cup to ruin pre-season and get all your players injured. But it is a pre-season. We will be kicking off tomorrow with a transfer special to end the week. You can see here, £60 million transfer budget. As I already mentioned, we might be spending some of that already, but... Regardless, there probably will be some wheeling and dealing going on. That said, to end things today, we are going to go do the end of season shebang. I'm going to take off this blazer. It's ridiculously hot. I will join you guys for the award ceremony and a little recap of the end of the season and looking ahead to season 17. 17 se I play a lot of football manager. I've got to be honest, there is part of me that kind of wishes we hadn't won both the Premier League and Champions League this year because it's nice to have something big pie in the sky to aim for. And from here, the only logical progression now is to target a treble, which I feel like is going to be a rather tall order. You can see here the signings that we made this year. Archer worked out amazingly. 7.48 rating for a wing back. I think we can say... £85 million pounds well spent. Maybe not £200,000 a week on the wages because he was constantly injured. That said, he wasn't signing of the season. Interestingly enough, signing of the season went to Ethan Chapman, which I kind of find it hard to argue against. This guy was not meant to be a super regular player. He was meant to be a squad option, so he may feature regularly if he played the 4-2-3-1. This year... 8 goals, 12 assists, 7.32 rating, some big performances in Europe as well. Yeah, I don't know why Manchester United sold him to us. And in terms of transfers out, probably one transfer we should be talking about. JV, Joseph Vucevic, sold to Arsenal for 80 million. 10 appearances, one goal, one assist. And he's now asking to leave the club. <sighs> I'm going to be honest, anyone who said that I made an error selling him, uh, I'm you're wrong. There's no way you can argue that it was the wrong decision to sell him. I'm sorry. Of course, when it came to the Premier League, we did kind of just stop playing at the end of things. Once we'd lost in the FA Cup um, and the title was already wrapped up, the players just kind of gave up trying. I forgot to mention, we did beat Manchester United 5-1 between episodes. I played a pretty rotated team in this game. Bellingham played left attacking mid. That was the state of play. Yeah, this was a weird game. But... It was actually the game that won us the title. Forgot to mention that earlier. But Liverpool weren't only four points behind us at the end. Whether or not you can attribute the, the slump at the end just to us knowing the title was won, I'll let you guys be the judge. But it wasn't exactly clean 
cut and super simple sailing to end the year. Liverpool, not a million miles away. Champions League, bizarre. I still don't know how to feel about this. We, we dodged all the big teams. I feel like Hertha Berlin in terms of finals was nice. I suppose maybe we should lean more into the games against Inter and Bayern as games that really showed what we're capable of. But ultimately, we won the competition. Cadman was top goal scorer. As for the FA Cup, having beaten Manchester United 6-0, the fact that we lost to Wolves 1-0, I'm not looking at it anymore. Of course, from a financial point of view, this was our first season in the Champions League. And as a result of it, even if stuff like sponsorship and broadcast revenue did drop, we did get over £65 million more competition prize money. And with all that global success in the Champions League, you can see here we've gone from continental reputation to worldwide. That's... That's quite exciting. And here is the Guernsey best 11 for the season. There's not too much I can really take issue with there. Of course, we didn't rotate the team as much as previous years. Last year, we kind of had an A team and a B team. This year, I was a bit more interchangey with my players. You can see here just the sheer number of games played by certain players. Manny Wilford with 56 games. Interesting to note that the 4-2-3-1 is the system that kind of the game chose as the system that we played. But when you look at the personnel in it, can't argue with any of them, and the sea of green ratings kind of implies we did quite well with these lot. Fans player of the season was Matthew Cadman. Young player of the season was Matthew Cadman. Top goal scorer was Matthew Cadman. Ethan Chapman did get signing of the season. Montero got goal of the season, and it, it was just the Cadman show this year. Cadman was a player who I feel like last year didn't, I mean, he didn't do badly, but he wasn't a player who I viewed as kind of irreplaceable. He went away in the summer, played for England a couple of times, then got dropped by the England national team. And I feel like he took that personally. I think there's a World Cup going on this year. What, what does the England squad look like, actually? Okay, I can confirm there is a World Cup going on this summer. Uh, how many Guernsey players are in it, I hear you ask? Seven. Seven Guernsey players in the England squad. That makes me feel warm and fuzzy. And Cadman has made it. For a second, I thought they left Cadman out and I would have been very upset. Manny Wilford did break a record for clean sheets in a season with 25. Of course, we did set a record for transfer fees paid and received. I think in hindsight, they were both good decisions, both the sale and the purchase. And here is the dynamic manager timeline, which is a lovely idea as a feature. When you get this far in the future and you're still hearing about all the players you signed as future stars in 2023... It, it doesn't really work, does it? I mean, I'll just click through it. I mean, look at it. This is fun, isn't it? This, this feature has so much potential. I wish you had the ability to manually curate it. I suppose I will sit here, shout and brag about the fact we did win Manager of the Year and Manny Wilford was the Champions League goalkeeper of the season. And if you're wondering about the Champions League Dream 11 of the season, the entire defence and goalkeeper was just our team. Kind of weird that, considering we scored the most goals in Champions League history, the fact that only Cadman features in the attacking third and yet we have the whole defence in it, that, that, that is just odd. And here is an updated look at the overall best 11 here at Guernsey for the entire playthrough so far. And I say so far because I do feel like there are a good few seasons left of this save game yet. I need to prove that this Champions League wasn't a fluke. I want to cement a dynasty. I want to set up this team so that when we do our holidaying into the future, for people who've never watched Park to Prem before, at the end of a series, I tend to holiday 10, 20, 50, sometimes even 100 years into the future to see... Will the team that I've built up stay at the top? Will the AI completely ruin them? And in order to make sure this team's successful, I feel like I've got to stay here for a little while yet. Here is the overall best 11. Aren't there any surprises there? No, not really. Scott Williams does still hold the record for most appearances. He's not very good anymore. Um, he's declining a lot. I will say, you know, he captains the Guernsey under-21s. And the Guernsey under-21s won the Premier League under-21s title this season. So we win everything. We're bloody massive. Expectations for next season, qualify for the Champions League, year after that challenge for the Premier League. I feel like one thing that has benefited us in the last few years is there's not been too much in the way of expectations. Based on what I've just read there with the club vision, that is going to change slightly. I just did the end of season meeting. It was standard end of season meeting stuff. But because so many players are on international duty, there was like seven players that showed up. I respect the seven players that showed up for my meeting to end the season. This season has been absolutely mad. I do feel like we've massively overachieved. If I was going to give my player of the season... 
Perhaps unsurprisingly, I'd give it to Cadman. I think Cadman would also get most improved player of the season. And I I feel like Matthew Cadman would just win everything. But bizarrely, and someone asked me recently in the comments, Jack, Cadman, Alanis, Lemos. You can only keep one of them. Which player would you keep? And I answered, th this might be controversial, I answered Alanis. And the reason I answered Alanis is because he's a year younger than Cadman. In fact, it's Alanis's birthday to today. Ha happy birthday, by the way, hi, mate. I think when you look at him, he is a little bit more complete. And I feel like as we go into this save game, he is going to be the player who really becomes the spearhead of the attack with Cadman behind. That said, we've got a 20-year-old and a 21-year-old, both labelled as leading Premier League players. So I think the future's in safe hands regardless. Plus, I suppose the good news for me is I don't have to pick between them. I've got them both. Now, like I already mentioned, we will be back tomorrow with a transfer special to kick things off. It's going to be interesting with the World Cup going on. We might be limited in players we can sign. If we do want to make signings, potentially got to loot move some players on who would i sell what controversial decisions could i make i think we'll tune in tomorrow to find out like i mentioned at the top of things let me know down in the comments feed the algorithm what's been your favorite moment of park to prem so far this year and alongside that of course do make sure to drop a like it's, it's below the video it takes half a second i know people hate it when youtubers ask but genuinely it really, really does make a difference. About 20% of the views on my videos come from the subscription box. So many more come from recommended and appearing on people's YouTube homepages. Liking the videos, commenting on videos is a way you can ensure the video hits more people's homepages. So it does actually help. Season 16 has been one to remember here at Guernsey, but we are not close to being done just yet. A Club World Cup on the horizon, a World Cup this summer. Lots still to achieve, I feel like, including an FA Cup. Next season, I'm getting my revenge on Wolves. I'll see you guys for that. Take it easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you all in a bit. I'm out.